What's up YouTube, Justin Fuller here. Today I'm outside of a 2022 Honda Civic Sport. So there's been a lot of changes from the 10th generation to what you currently see behind me. So we're gonna go over what those are and how it stacks up against the competition. So let's hop on in. Alright guys, so here I am at the front of this 2022 Honda Civic Sport and we should probably talk about what's underneath the hood. So let me pull you on in and tell you kind of what's going on here. So underneath the hood, you've got the two liter engine. You're gonna find this in the LX model and you're gonna find this in the Sport model. So not a turboed engine, this is gonna put out 158 horsepower that is running to that CVT uh, transmission and then pushing out to these 18 inch alloy wheels. Now, let's look underneath the hood and talk about a couple things. First, you've got your windshield wiper fluid, so easy to access. I've got a reservoir right here. I've got a lot of space, so you can see right down through into the bottom there. Uh, I've got my air box right here. Of course, I've got something sitting right here as far as fuses, and then up top, I've got my battery, the easy access to both terminals. So you've got a lot of space under here in case you wanna do anything, you wanna run auxiliary lines, whether it be for amps, subs, additional lights, maybe you wanna throw fog lights or whatever it may be, know that you have the space. So before we leave the front of the car, I wanna to talk to you about horsepower. So this car has 158 horsepower, Power, but I want to throw up a comparison on the screen so you can see how this car stacks up to other vehicles out there in the market. Now, after we do that, we're going to talk about miles per gallon. All right, guys, so let's talk about MPGs as far as the Honda Civic goes. So this particular car gets 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. Now, if you were looking at the 2021 model, you'd be getting 29 in the city and 37 on the highway. So you are getting one MPG better as far as the city goes. Now, if you're thinking about looking at this two liter engine and maybe jumping up to that 1.5 liter turbo in that EX, I would say that it might be a good thing if you're looking for that commuter car because it does get 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So just something to keep in mind as far as the differences between the two engines. Now, now that we've talked about kind of the 21s and the 22s, I want to talk about, of course, the 2022 and its competitors out there on the market. So I'm going to throw something up on the screen so that you can see how this car stacks up against some of the competition out there on the market. So take a look at that, and then we'll move on forward. All right, guys, so let's do a walk around in this car and talk about what's different from 21 to 22 so you can really understand, hey, if I'm jumping up, what am I really paying for? So I'm going to pull you on in here and start at the front of the car because this is where you're going to see a lot of the changes at. So when you're looking at the front of the car, you're going to notice that it doesn't have that chrome tip brow or that smoked look, and then there used to be a divider right here. So that's gone, and never mind that my fingerprints there, sorry, when I was opening the grid. But I do want to point out that you have this nice eyebrow look to it, right? So it's a nice smooth look as far as the LEDs running with your daytime running lights and then coming across, right? Now it doesn't have fog lights. If you're looking for the fog lights, you're actually gonna have to climb all the way up, I believe, to the touring model. Uh, so just be aware of that. Now, as we come around the side, something that's indicative of this sport is to have that sport look. So you're gonna notice it has this nice black alloy painted wheel on it. Uh, so an 18 inch alloy wheel, super cool. I like the pattern, it's actually a good look to it. Now, as you come up, you will notice that as part of the sport, you are getting these body colored mirrors and they are breakaway mirrors. So just something to be aware of. Now, as we move around the driver's side, I will point out that this car does have keyless entry. So I can walk up, put my hand on it, unlock it, or I can touch the three little butts and I can lock it, right? So easy enough as far as getting in and out of the car. So kind of a cool feature that you wouldn't have seen necessarily in previous generations. Now, as we work our way around to the back, I will point out that, of course, this is connected to your door lock. So if your door locks open, you can pop this open and it is capless, which is kind of cool. And I'll show you how to do this in a second if you needed to fill up with gas and let's say you ran out. Now, as we work around to the back of the car, of course, it's badge Civic. You see your Honda emblem back here. And of course, you need to see that it's badge Sport additionally as well. Now, underneath here, I will point out that your backup camera is right here. And then down below, you've got that chrome tipped exhaust. So it does have a nice sporty feel to it. All right, so let's talk about safety in the 2022 Honda Civic. So I want to kind of pull you in and point out first the airbags that you have in this car. So you have two front airbags. You additionally have two knee airbags in the front now, along with two side airbags, two rear side airbags, and then two full curtain airbags. So you're going to find 10 airbags in this car now, which is a little bit different from previous generations. Now, as we wrap around to the front, I want to talk to you about Honda sensing because this vehicle does have it. Now, first off, I point out that you do have radar down here in the grill, uh, so it's going to live in here. And then as we come up, you're going to notice the trap is always kind 
cut out of the windshield, and that's where the camera lives, right? So these are going to play a role in a couple different features. Now, the first being a collision mitigation braking system, meaning that if it's looking like I'm going to rear in another car, first it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll flash in the dash and actually apply the brakes to help prevent an accident. Now, additionally on that, you have a road departure warning system, right? And it'll actually correct for you. So if you start to drift off the side of the road, it'll give you an audible alert to shake the wheel and say, hey, wake up, pay attention. Now, if you're looking for the correction, you do have lane keep assist, meaning that if I've set this, if I start to drift to the left or the right out of my lane, it'll actually correct for me and keep me centered. So a lot of different cool features that live inside of this vehicle. Now, if you were looking for blind spot monitoring, you are going to need to jump up to that EX trim. I do want to take a second to just talk about that. If you're jumping up to the EX trim, you probably want to know, hey, what additional features could I get? And is it worth the money? How much is it going to cost me? So I want to throw that up on the screen right now so that you can see, hey, if I jump up to the EX, how much is it going to cost me? And what additional features am I going to get? Because maybe that, you know, that 1.5 liter turbo engine is important to you. Maybe that extra gas mileage is important to you. Maybe the moonroof is important to you. I don't know, but I want you to see that list of items and really understand. Now, Additionally, let's go the other way. If I want to drop down from this sport down to the LX model, what am I going to lose? What am I giving up? And how much money am I going to save? So I'm going to throw that up on the screen so that you can really understand, hey, I'd be willing to give up these items, but is it worth this amount of money? So check that out and then we'll move on. So yeah, I am in the trunk of this car and it's kind of to prove a point that it's deceivingly large. While you have given up 0.3, I believe, cubic inches on this car, moving from the 21 to the 22, I do want to point out that you do have quite a bit of space still in this car. So I'm going to throw up the dimensions so that you can kind of understand where the changes have been made as far as the width of the car, the length of the car, and then of course, you know, trunk space and cabin space. So take a look at that and then we'll actually talk about the cargo space, what you've got in it and how it stacks up against the competitors. All right guys, so as we come into the trunk, the first thing I want to point out that as we come in, you'll see that it's not a 60 40 split it's a single fold down with the access right here so if you're looking for that 60 40 you would need to climb up to that ex trim now it does have carpet floor mats so i always like to point that out that not every make and manufacturer offers free floor mats as far as with their car some of them it's an upcharge now underneath down here you of course have your full diameter spare meaning it's the full height just not the full width and then you have your jack and your accessories and this mystery funnel that we're going to talk about right after we go over cargo space all right guys so before we leave the trunk space i want to talk to you about cargo space and how it stacks up so i want you to see kind of an understanding between the 21 and the 22 so i'm gonna throw that up real quick so that you can understand and then additionally, I'm going to throw up a comparison to what else is out there on the market. So this way you can really see how this car stacks up, not only against what's on the market, but the previous generation. So check that out, and then we'll talk about a couple other cool features. Not to say that this isn't a good look, but that's not really what this is for. So let's talk about that. So this actually has a purpose. If you were to run out of gas, you would need this to be able to hold this capless setup open so that you could pour gas into it. Because you may not have a gas can, right? You may be using a water bottle. You may be using a Ziploc bag. You may be using whatever is available to you. So if you were ever wondering what this piece is for, now you know. All right, guys, so here I am in the second row of this Honda Civic. And I just want to talk to you, of course, about the leg space and then about the materials that you're going to see here in the back. So let's talk about the materials first. So I want to point out that this car offers kind of a leather cloth blend. So you're going to notice down the sides, you've got this leather here. You've got a leather strip running up through the middle. And then you have that cloth finish here. Now, as you move up to the front, you're going to find that leather on the, sh the shifter and the steering wheel as well. So it is a nice blend that you're going to find in this. Now, let's talk about legroom. So back here, I want to point out that I have the seat literally pushed all the way back. And as a six footer, I can still fit back here and I don't have to play the diagonal game and I can still get my shoes out and all of that. So I know that that can be important. So I want to do a couple things. One, I want to throw a comparison up on the screen so that you can understand not only how this car stacks up against the 2021 model, but then how it stacks up additionally against those other makes and models out there on the market. So I want you to be able to take a look at that and then we'll head on up to the front row and we'll do the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a hot one. Now I am sitting in the front row of this car and I do want to point out that the Sport only comes in a black interior. So just something to be aware of. Now it is a cloth leather blend, so I wouldn't be as concerned if this was full leather. So if you happen to live in one of those really hot states, just something to be aware of that you can't get this one in, you know, the grays and the tans and, and you would like an LX or necessarily if you moved up to the EX. So just something to be aware. Now let's point out, of course, the seat stitching in the front is going to be a little bit different from the back. So you can see, I almost have this like, you know, a pattern racing stripe that runs the car. And then of course I do have that leather that runs down the sides and then the cloth down the center. Now, just something to be aware of. Now up front, I want to point out that I do have quite a bit of leg space. So I didn't move the seat. I had it pushed all the way back when I was sitting in the back seat. So now you can see I have a ton of space up here. So as a six footer, I would probably need to scoot this up so that I could touch the pedals a little bit better. So just something to be aware of. Now, while we're talking about that, I do want to throw a comparison up on the screen so that you can see how this car stacks up as far as front legroom against other vehicles out there in the market. So take a look at that, check it out, and then we'll go over the dash layout. And as we come across, I'm going to point out that there's a lot of changes when it comes to the interior of this car, but we're going to walk you through them. So I'm going to start you down here at the bottom and just kind of go through a couple buttons. So the first one I point out is over here on the side is your trunk release, and then your, your hood release is actually down there. You can see it right there. Now, as we come up, you're going to see first vehicle 
vehicle stability assist. So this works with your traction control. So in the event that you go into skid, uh, and you, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction. So this is always in running, uh, on and running, I should say. Now above that is gonna be related to Hansa sensing. If I press this button, it is gonna pull up this screen that you see right here, and it'll give me the ability to toggle between the two, right? So I have the road departure mitigation system there, and that's what I mentioned earlier, where if you start to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll be an auto alert and shake the wheel. And then down below that is collision mitigation braking. So to review over that, that's where as if it's looking like I'm gonna rear under the car, first it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll flash in the dash and it'll actually start to apply the brakes to help prevent the accident. Now, once again, if you're looking for that blind spot monitoring system additionally too, you would wanna climb up to that EX model. So just something to be aware of when you're looking at this car. And there are gonna be a couple other Honda sensing features that we'll go over here in just a second. Now, over here, I'll just point out that they have changed as far as the air vents. Uh, it's got a nice honeycomb look to it and you just bend them and move them around and you get your air right here. So kind of a cool look, right? It runs across the entire dash, uh, which is, it's just kind of sleek and nice looking. So I, I do really like that. I think that that change is kind of a cool one. All right, guys, so let's talk about the steering wheel inside of this vehicle. So I wanna start you over here on the left side, right? So there's this menu button you can press and this is going to allow you to toggle through all these different screens that you see up here, right? So let's go over some of those screens. Now, the first one I'll say is just no content, right? So if I click on that, it's just going to be a blank and I can just see my tachometer. And the tachometer you can actually turn off too if you want. Now, if I press that home button again, I can come down to warning. So this is like if I left my trunk open, if I left the door open, that sort of thing, right? Now, one more down, range and fuel. I think everybody understands that speed and time. These are just kind of, you know, your general, hey, I want trip A, I want trip B, that sort of thing. And I can scroll up and down between the two uh, and then select them and reset them, right? So easy to do. And when I say scroll up and down, I'm using this little toggle right here. Now, as we come back in here, uh, we're going to move past that. Driver attention monitor, if you're using all the Honda sensing features, which I'll show you a couple more in a minute, it's going to make sense because you might be not be touching the gas pedal uh, or the brake that much, and the steering wheel will kind of help control itself. So this is just going to make sure at some points that you are actively using the car so you don't get drowsy and kind of, you know, uh, doze off on the road. Now, something new that they've added is the seatbelt reminder. So you can see that I'm not wearing my seatbelt right now, and it actually tells me which seat. So this is really cool. If you got little ones in the back there, you'll be able to see who's wearing their seatbelt and who's not. So whether you ask them and they answer, this way you can actually tell. So just kind of a cool new thing that they've added to the vehicle. Uh, maintenance. So this will give you your maintenance reminders. When you get down to 15%, it'll give you an audible alert and a visual alert uh, and let you know a code. So you'd see like A1, A2, or B1, or B2. And then from there, you could Google it. You could look it up in your manual, whatever you want to do. Uh, they've been doing this for years, and it'll tell you exactly what they're going to recommend you when you get to the dealership or if you go to like a Jiffy Lube or wherever you want to go to get your, your oil done, right? Now, safety support is going to pull up uh, some of those Honda sensing features that we were just talking about a second ago. So I'm going to jump back out of that and then we can go to settings. Now, what's different is in previous generations, the settings, you could control a lot of settings from up here. The settings that are going to be in this now are only related to this. So more of the vehicle settings like door locks and window lock controls are actually going to be in here. So when I select this, Right, I can curl, I can come into it, and then I can control like my tire pressure monitoring system. I can get into my driver assist setup, uh, my meter setup. This would be where you'd go if you wanted to turn off that tachometer. Um, keyless access setup. So this is going to play a role. You know, your door unlock mode. This is probably going to be one of the most important ones. Is you'd come in here and say, hey, right now, um, you know, it only opens my driver's side door when I walk up and touch my hand at the door handle. You can set it to where it'll unlock all the doors when you do it. So just kind of a cool trick that you can do. So some different things here. So I'm going to go back out of that. Right. Now, as we move around here, uh, keyless access flash, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can play with here. I'm gonna go back one more time so that we can get back into that menu uh, and you can just see kind of all the things that we scroll through. So a lot of the key and door setup, so door setup, this is where you're gonna find like auto door unlock and um, your auto door lock, right? So at 10 miles an hour to automatically lock the doors, you got a couple different options you can change it to there. And then one down from that, um, you can actually go, let me go back here. So a little bit hard to toggle through this uh, just because it kind of drops you a bit in that back setting. Uh, but if I get back into that from auto door locking go to auto door unlock when you open your driver's side door it then unlocks the remaining doors of the car i'm not a fan of this feature i like to change it to something else just because sometimes a person getting out of the car is getting their purse together getting their bag together getting their keys their laptop all their different stuff and it doesn't unlock the remaining doors of the car so sometimes i like it when you shift to park it unlocks them all so that way everybody else can just kind of pile out of the car right so these are just easy settings that you can get to that i wanted you to know about uh now under this customized display it really just lets you jump into it and change a couple things uh as far as what you can see when you're going through so if you wanted to like turn this feature off you absolutely could and that way when you're toggling through it just won't be there right so that's the digital side here. Now, as you move across this, I will point out that you do have not only a digital, but analog display as far as your miles per gallon. So that's kind of cool that they do that. And then of course you get a temperature reading, then how many miles and then your gas right here. So a nice setup. I wish the whole thing would have been digital. That would have been cool, but at least they got you one side. So this resembles a lot of what you'd see in an Accord. Now on the other side of the steering wheel is going to where you're fight those additional Honda sensing features, right? So there's adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. Now let's talk about lane keep assist first. So if I 
first I got to turn on this button right here and this is going to kind of set me all up or actually, yeah, there we go. Uh, and then when I get up to speed, I would press this button right here and you're going to see that icon come on, right? So when you're going over 45 miles an hour, it's going to drop in these lines and you're going to fill in solid. Now, once you're doing that, if you start to drift to the left or the right, it's going to actually pull you back into your lane and it's using this camera up here that I mentioned earlier to detect the lines out on the road. So a really cool feature. Now, if you don't use your blinkers, you're probably not going to like this because every time you go to get over without using your blinker, it's going to want to pull you back a little bit. It's not, you know, invasive. It's not anything that you couldn't overpower. It's not going to like get you in a wreck, but it's like if you've ever been in a car that just pulls kind of to the left or the right, that's the feeling that you're going to get. Now, that's lane keep assist. Now, let's talk about adaptive cruise control. So I get up to my speed and I press set. Now, once I've done that, you're going to see this icon right here. Now, if I press this button right here, it's gonna create these boxes up here that you can see right there. Now, the more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between my car. And what I mean by that is it's actually gonna use the radar down in the front of the grill to bounce it off the car in front of you. So that way, if you're going 65, a guy gets in front of you going 55, it'll create space and slow you down. And then when you get out from behind him, it'll take you back up to your designated speed. So just something cool to know, right? So now, if you wanna turn that feature off and just go to a classic cruise control, if you press and hold this button, You'll hear that kind of weird sound and it'll either see ACC mode or I'll press it again for you just so you can see it one more time or cruise mode selected, right? So I just want you to know that you can turn that feature off and just use classic cruise if you want. Now, this is a sport model, so you will find the paddle shifters on this vehicle. So that's just part of that sport trim. You know, when you're getting those larger wheels, you're getting the paddle shifter. It's a more sport performance based look uh, because it still is a CVT transmission. So it doesn't like a six gear transmission or like that. It's set to ratios, right? But it does allow you to upshift and downshift the car. Uh, so it just gives you a little bit more control over the performance of it. Now, back here, you can see that I do have auto on off headlights. Uh, and then as I move across, I've got my windshield wiper controls additionally here. Uh, um, so let's talk about the center stack first, right? So I'll come up to the touchscreen last. So on the center stack, obviously I have these AC controls here in my flashes, right? So once again, it runs at full extent. And then I've got this kind of shine finished here along with the mat with the rest. So kind of a, a, you know, a differentiator right there. And I will point out that the screen actually sits a lot higher now, like the Accord or like an old school Audi or BMW. So it's kind of taken on that trend, which I do like because that way, if you're looking at the screen, it's only a quick glance above to make sure that, you know, you're not looking way down and then you wreck your car, right? Now in the center here, you do have your AC controls. It's a, um, what I call single control. So it's not left and right separate of each other so it's just fan uh you know fan hot or cold and where you want the air to go right and then you know recycling and your normal things you know rear um, um as far as uh the defrost right now down below you've got your usb right here and you can see i have my phone plugged into it now sideways it doesn't quite fit in there if i go long ways it doesn't quite fit in there and i use a pixel 5 which is about the size of an iphone so that's kind of a bummer but maybe it makes it easier for you to grab i don't know maybe you prefer it it's just kind of annoying to me i wish it would lay flat one of the directions i do have a power outlet here so i could run a you know a secondary uh, a plug into there that has maybe one or two USBs if I wanted to additionally. So it's kind of cool there. Now, I do have two cup holders, which you can see I have my sunglasses in right now. Uh, and then I've got this kind of graphite finish right here. Uh, and then over here on the shifter, I will point out that they, I, it was mentioned that they've actually angled this over about 14 degrees. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And then, of course, I can throw it in reverse, neutral, and drive. And you're going to notice there's not a sport and a lower here because what they've done now is they've moved that down to these drive modes. So I can press this, and up here, you're going to see these little uh, graphics that pop up, right? So normal, sport, and econ, right? So I can scroll down to econ. Now, econ, there used to be an econ button and a sport button, right? So they've just made this a little bit sleeker and I do really like the graphic that goes with it. So at the top, sport, it's gonna rev at a higher RPM. It's gonna give you a little bit more get up and go, but you're gonna give up on that gas mileage. So right now you're getting 30 in the city and 37 on the highway, so that would drop when you're using it, but you'll have that more performance-based drive. Now, if I press down to normal, that would just be standard classic driving, what's getting me that 30 in the city and, 30 on, and 37 on the highway. Now, if I drop one below that, it brings the econ mode on, which it'll let you know if that leaf is on too. So much like the previous generation, just a different way to set these features, right? And that will improve gas mileage, but it's gonna take off some of the power that you have like the accelerator, and it's gonna affect some of the AC controls, just limiting things to help improve gas mileage. So a little bit different. You won't find this in the 2022 model in the same setup, uh, but I do like the way that they've done it, and I like the graphic display that they're offering. Now. I do have an idle stop start feature in this car, which is new to the 2022 model, uh, meaning that if I turn this on, or actually it is always on, I have to press this to turn it off every time I turn off the car if I don't want it on. Now, what it is, is when I come to a complete stop, if I'm sitting there idling like a stoplight, it can turn the car off, but leave the electronics and the AC controls on. It's just kind of a bummer. I wish I could default it off, and that way if I want to turn it on, I could turn it back on. But the way it's set up, every time I turn the car on, if I don't want this on, I'll have to press the button every time. So kind of a bummer in that sense. Now, your parking brake is electronic. Pull up to set it, and then uh, with your foot on the brake and press down. So easy enough to use. And I will remind you that one thing they've changed is for connecting up to Android Auto in this vehicle or Apple CarPlay, you do have to have this on now. So it's kind of one of those weird things that I ran into and didn't realize, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't connect up. So just a, a you know kind of a quick tip that you may run into uh, and pay attention to. 
Now, brake hold is set up to where if I'm in stop and go traffic, what it'll allow me to do is actually take my foot off the brake while the car's in drive and hold the brake for me. So a really cool feature. So let me put on my seatbelt here real quick because you do have to have your seatbelt on to use this feature. And I'm gonna back up a little bit out of the spot that I'm in. And actually while I'm backing up, Let's show you the backup camera. Uh, so the backup camera's right here. I've got three different views. So a wide angle view giving me 170 degrees, standard backup camera right there, and then one aim straight down. So if I'm backing up to a curb, a garage, a bush, if I'm worried about my kid's bicycle being parked back there, or my dog, uh, which is happily sitting in my Jeep over by us. Uh, so I back up, right? And so that's my backup camera with the three different views. Now, I wanna to talk to you about the brake hold, right? So I throw it down and drive here and I press the brake hold button and you're gonna see brake hold and then you're gonna see if it's holding. If it's holding, it means I can take my foot off the brake, while the car's in drive and we're not moving. Now, when I touch the gas, it's gonna release that hold. We're gonna start moving. Then when I come to a complete stop again, once I come to the stop, it'll press, it'll show the hold button again. And then it's holding for me. I release my foot and we're still in drive. So this is good for like a drive-through line. Uh, you know, if you're in a drive-through line waiting for food or maybe you're at the bank, but remember, you do have to have your seatbelt on. If you take your seatbelt off, no, you're not gonna roll into anyone, but what you should know is that it's immediately gonna throw the parking brake on for you, right? So you can see two different indicators and it's gonna light up here so that you don't roll into the car in front of you. Uh, so just be aware of that. It's kind of an, a good idea of a feature, but I know shorter and smaller people have to like reach out the window and take their seatbelt off sometimes to reach their food or the ATM. So just, just be aware of that as far as that goes. So let's now talk about the touchscreen. All right, guys, so here we are on the touchscreen of the car. And the first thing that I want to talk about is, of course, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay because it does offer it. Now, I happen to use a Google Pixel, so I'm an Android Auto user. So on here, I can touch this home button and it'll pull up all the different apps that I have available to me. I only use a basic few, but you have a lot available to you. So Spotify, Pandora, YouTube Music. Um, you know, if you're a, a going over to that GPS side, you've got Google Maps, you've got Waze, you've got TomTom, Tom. a lot of different options available to you. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through you and show you some of the things. And it's just really cool because I have the ability to pull up Spotify without picking up my phone. It pulls it up and then I can jump into here, right? And start playing music. So it just allows me to set my phone down and really not focus on it. So it is integrated into this car, which is a really cool feature. And that you do have this touchscreen sitting right here, right? Now you do catch a little bit of glare. I'm sitting in the shade, but there is a little bit. Of so I would love that if it was a little bit more matte, but you just can't have it sitting up this high without catching a little bit of glare. So something to be aware of when you're looking at this. Now down across the bottom, they've actually done actual buttons, which is kind of a smart move. So this way, if I want to jump out of the phone, I absolutely can right and then it allows me to work through that i can jump into the radio and then if i want to go fm am whatever i want to listen to if i want to jump over to media so whether it's a usb whether it's my phone that's plugged in um you know whatever it may be that you want to access from that standpoint um you know that way if you want to thumb drive and plug it in the usb and store music or i press the connect button to get into apple carplay and android auto right and there is some customization that you can do in here and some different things that you can play with uh you know i've changed the background image here so know that you can change a little bit but in the previous generation civic i will say there was a lot more customization to the touchscreen so it is a, a big downfall to me if you're that kind of person who wants to customize uh, from the home screen and have different things going on you don't have that ability in this car they've really simplified down the touchscreen which is good in the sense that it means everyone will be able to work through it a little bit easier but bad in the sense that if you already understood the previous one and you really wanted that customizational options you don't have them anymore so just something to be aware of now i do have a menu button over here and this will just jump through my settings so as i mentioned before you do have some settings options but it's things like hey my bluetooth settings you know i need to add or change a device disc connect all devices or delete a device. So some basic stuff in here, right? My clock settings. So, hey, I just want to change the time, that sort of thing. So it's very easy to work through. Don't get me wrong in that sense. Uh, just very basic, right? Like I would ask for more. Uh, if I come down here, I can go to Android Auto, right? And then from here, I can select the, the um, obviously the pixel that I'm using. Um, so the device that I'm working through. So easy to understand and work through this, just not a lot of customization available to you. But I think maybe that's a plus for the people that just couldn't figure it out in the previous generation. They've really simplified this and dumbed it down. But in doing so, you've given up a lot of that customization that was available to you. So before we leave this, I just want to say quickly that, hey, I'm going to throw out 15 of the most common apps that you would be using or that you could find as far as using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, because I do want you to know that there's a lot out there that you can still do in this car, right? So take a look at that on the screen. Hopefully that helps. And know that as you see this, they're forever updating and adding more to it. You can look it up at any point and always see the upgrades and changes that they're making to this. So just be aware of that. Now, one thing I will point out is when I connected up my phone earlier via the USB right here, I did have a longer cord and I ran into the issue of it not recognizing the USB cord. Uh, so I occasionally get questions about that and I just had to change out the cord and once I did everything worked fine so just another quick tip or trick be aware of hey if you're running into those kind of issues typically it's usually the cord all right guys so it's time to do a final review as far as this vehicle goes so I want to go back through all the comparisons and then talk about a couple things that you should be aware of whether you're looking at the EX above it you're looking at the LX below it and the competition out there right so the first thing I want to start you off is up at the front of the car we talked about horsepower this car uses that 2.0 liter engine so you're getting 158 horsepower 
I will throw up on the screen a comparison to other makes and models out there so that you can understand where this car lives in a comparison to. Now, I will mention that if you jump up to the EX, you are getting that 1.5 liter turbo engine that does get you 180 horsepower. So if you make that jump, it can be beneficial if you're looking for that extra oomph in the engine. Now, related to that, I want to talk to you about gas mileage. So what I'm going to do, this car gets 30 in the city and 37 on the highway. I want to throw you a comparison up so you can see what else is out there in the market and how it competes. I'll remind you that the previous generation would have gotten 29 in the city and 37 on the highway. So you gain one extra mile per gallon moving up to the 2022. Now, if you go up to the EX, I do want you to be aware that you do gain gas mileage. You actually get horsepower and gas mileage. You get 33 in the city and 42 on the highway. So just something to be aware of. While this is a performance-based look, and it definitely is labeled sport and kind of has that, that overall look and feel to it, it doesn't necessarily get you the power or the, uh, you know, the, the miles per gallon, which is kind of deceiving, right? Now, let's talk about space. So at the very back of the car, I want to talk about that cargo trunk space. So I want to throw that comparison up on the screen so that you can really understand how it stacks up against those other cars out there in the market. Now, I believe this car gave up 0.3, like, you know, square inches compared to the previous generation. So it's really not much difference there. And you saw me climb in the trunk. There's a good amount of space that you can use, but I just want you to be aware of that. And if you're looking for that 60-40 split versus the single flip down, you want to climb up to that EX as well. So just some reminders. Uh, now, as we go into the second row of the car, right, we talked about leg space back there and the two different types of materials. You have a leather mixed with a cloth blend. So be aware that the Sport does offer that. It is kind of cool and unique only to this trim level. If you go up to the EX, it's just strictly cloth. You got to go all the way to that touring model if you want all leather. You do, however, have leather on your shifter and leather on your steering wheel, which is nice in this car, and you will land on the EX as well. Now, legroom space in the back row. I want to throw that comparison back up at the screen so that you can see and understand how the car stacks against others out there in the market. Now, Sitting behind myself, I had no issue. I'd be fine if we took a long trip, if there was just two of us back there. If you added a third burst in the middle, it would kind of suck. Let's be honest. And this is coming from someone who has owned a Civic myself. Um, now, moving up into the front row of this car, I will say that you have quite a bit of leg space. Uh, and especially compared to previous generations, uh, when you start moving past the 10th and you know the previous others, right? So a lot of leg space. I want to throw that comparison up so you can see how this car stacks up against those other cars out there. Uh, now, up in the front, I will remind you, it is a lot different up here. It is a sleek, smooth, and cool look. Never mind the sweat. <laughs> this spit that I just threw at you. Um, while that wasn't sleek, the outer and inner look to this car is a very nice look to it. So know that you have that available to you when you're moving up to that 2022. Not that the 21 was bad, but I love the display. I love that you moved the screen up. I wish that they had not taken away all the uh, customization, but it is what it is, right? So that's related to the front row, right? Now, I want to do a couple things real quick before we go. First, I want to throw back up on the screen, if I jump from this sport model up to the EX, how much extra is it going to cost me and what additional features am I gaining? So take a look at that. Now, after you've looked at that, we're going to do the opposite. If I drop from this sport down to the base model, that LX, how much money am I going to save and what features am I giving up? So I'm going to throw that up on the screen too so that you can really understand, hey, where does this really live and what's the difference in price per what I get or what I give up, right? So after you've done that, I have a few favors to ask you. One, I hope you'll press the like button because you absolutely love the way I present this and you appreciate the info that I'm giving you. Uh, secondarily, I hope that you'll, of course, subscribe to the channel, right? Let me tell you about this car. Let me tell you about all the new 2020s that are coming out and, of course, how they stack up and compare against other vehicles out there in the market. And if I could get my hands on the opposite vehicle that, you know, compares this, I might even review that too. Third, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. You know, is there something you feel like I missed? Is there something you want me to go over? Is there, a, you know, a single small video you wish I'd make? Ask. I'll probably answer you, or I might just make it. Um, and then fourth, share the video. Hey man, it's a 2022, it's brand new. Maybe you have friends who old, you know, own the old ones. Or maybe they're in a Facebook group or forum. I guarantee you there's gonna be a lot of people starting to transition from older 10th gens to 11th gens. Why not be able to share this info so that they know what you know and they can appreciate how beautiful my face is. And most of that, right? Other than that, hit the like button, share, subscribe, all the other things, and let it go!